I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to play Fire Mage in Cataclysm Classic. We're going to start off looking at what race we are going to play. If you are choosing Alliance, I would recommend going for the new class of race of Worgen, which is going to give you the Dark Flight Racial. This is on a two minute cooldown, increasing movement speed by 40% for 10 seconds. Another reason we're getting this is because of viciousness, increasing our crit chance by 1%. You could also go for human, making your life a little bit easier earlier on in Cataclysm with the diplomacy racial, increasing reputation gains by 10%. There's a few reasons we'll be talking about later in this video why reputation matters. If you are going to be Horde, I recommend a troll for the berserking racial, three minute cooldown, it's like a mini bloodlust, increasing your casting speed by 20% for 10 seconds and we also have beast slaying while not massively helpful on most bosses there are going to be a few bosses when we eventually get to firelands that are actually beasts and we will be doing more damage against them with this racial again main reason for berserking but it's nice and handy to have the little beast slaying when we need it for the stat priority, first and foremost, more and more intellect is always going to be our best bet on our gear. And after that, we're going to want to hit our 17% spell hit rating, which is going to be the cap. After that, we're going to go on to haste until we hit our soft cap. If you are wondering what this cap is, then basically it's this spreadsheet here, and these are the values to hit the 15% soft cap. Don't worry too much if you're not really interested about that. You can obviously get more haste after this. Just know that this is the kind of base amount that we will be hitting the soft cap at, where our priorities are going to change. After that, we're going to want crit chance, and then after that, we're going to either want mastery or more haste. In regards to what our mastery actually does, it increases the damage done by all of our periodic fire damage effects by X amount, depending on, of course, our mastery. Looking at the talents, it's not surprising that most of our talents are going into fire, seeming as this is a guide for fire mage. And we have got a few other talents in Arcane. Neverwind Presence, increasing your spell haste by 3%, and also Piercing Ice, increasing our crit by 3%. We're going to put these on last if you are still levelling. We're going for Master of the Elements in Fire, where our spell crits are going to refund 30% of their base mana, and also Burning Soul, reducing the casting time lost if we get hit by any damaging attacks by 70%. If you don't need this, shove it in Improved Fire Blast. Then we're going on to the periodic effects that we mentioned in the Mastery. Ignite, your critical strikes from non-periodic fire damage cause the target to burn for an additional 40% of your spell's damage over four seconds. So when we're hitting the enemy with non-periodic damage, this is going to be adding an extra dot or damage over time onto them. We then have Firepower, increasing the damage of your fire spells by 3% and giving your Flame Orb a 100% chance to explode for tons of damage at the end of its duration. That is this cooldown here, which we are going to use on cooldown, launching a Flame Orb towards the Major's position, or from, sorry, the Major's position, dealing damage every second to the closest enemy for 15 seconds and exploding at the end of its duration. Then we have Impact, giving your damaging spells a 10% chance to reset the cooldown of Fire Blast and cause the next Fire Blast you cast to stun the target for 2 seconds and spread any fire damage over time effects to nearby enemies within 12 yards. That is your Fire Blast spell here, and when that procs, we can use it to actually spread all of our um, fire damage to other enemies. And that's the main change we're going to be doing from the single target to the AoE rotation, is going to be using Fire Blast to spread that damage around to other enemies. We then have Cauterize. You've got 100% chance that an attack which would otherwise kill you to instead bring you to 40% maximum health. You will burn for 12% of your maximum health every 1.5 seconds for the next 6 seconds, however. So basically, this is a get out of jail free card, but you are going to need to receive some healing after it. Blast Wave is um, another spell that we're going to get from our talents. A wave of flame radiating outward from the target location, damaging all enemies caught within the blast for X amount of fire damage and are slowed. This is mainly used as a slow, but you can use it in AoE as well if needed. And then we've got uh, Improved Scorch, reducing the mana cost of your Scorch spell by 100%, and that is this one here. We then have Hot Streak and Improved Hot Streak. This is one of the core foundations of Fire Mage. Your spells no longer trigger arcane missiles. Instead, your critical strikes with Fireball, Frost Firebolt, and Scorch, Pyroblast or Fireblast, basically all your fire spells, have a chance to cause your next Pyroblast within 15 seconds to be instant cast and cost no mana. So when we crit with any of our spells, let's say Scorch, we're going to get 
a hot streak on our Pyroblast. You can see here, it's instant and costs zero mana. Our Pyroblast has an immense fiery, fiery boulder that causes immense fire damage and an additional amount of fire damage over 12 seconds. And we're going to be using that whenever it procs from a critical strike. We also have this spell here, which is a massive cooldown combust. We'll be talking through that more in the rotation part. Fire starter allows you to cast, cast Scorch while moving. So again, our Scorch spell, we can actually use it, as you can see here, on the move, which is really good if it's a a boss we're fighting where we need to be moving around a lot. Dragon's Breath, another cooldown we've got here. Well, I say cooldown, it's only 17 seconds. Targets in a cone in front of the caster, take fire damage and disoriented for five seconds. This is again mainly used as a disorient rather than something we're going to be using in our rotation. Improved Flame Strike, reducing the casting time of Flame Strike by 100% and gives you a 100% chance that your Blast Wave spell will auto also automatically Flame Strike the same location if two or more targets are affected by the Blast Wave. So we can use our Flame Strike to do loads of fire damage here. As you can see, a pillar of flame burning all enemies within the area. And then we can use our Blast Wave um, in tandem with that due to that talent. We then have Molten Fury, increasing the damage of all spells against targets that from 35% health. Therefore, it's just putting us in an execute phase near the end of the fight. Three out of three into Critical Mass. This is a fun one. Your Living Bomb and Flame Orb spells deal 15% more damage. And your Pyroblast and Scorch have a 100% chance to cause your target to be vulnerable to spell damage. Increasing spell critical strike chance against that target by 5% and lasts 30 seconds. Pyromaniac, increasing the spell haste by 10% if three or more targets are taking fire damage over time from your spells. And lastly, Living Bomb. The target becomes Living Bomb, taking fire damage over 11 seconds. After that, it will explode, dealing damage to enemies within 10 yards. You do want to let this explode. Let's just have a look through what glyphs we're taking, and then we're going to go through how it all comes together into the rotation. So on our prime glyphs, we're going with Pyroblast, increasing the critical chance of it by 5%. Fireball, increasing the crit chance by 5%. And Molten Armor. You have a few different armors you can choose from, only one being able to have active at a time on your mage, and we're going to be going with Molten Armor when we're in Fire Spec. The Molten Armor grants an additional 2% spell critical strike chance. For our major ones, we can go with Dragon Bleph, reducing the cooldown of it. If you need more um, Disorient from that spell, take this. Blast Wave, increasing the duration of its slowing effect. Again, using that mainly for the uh, slow effects there. And Glyph of Evocation. Your Evocation ability also causes you to regain 40% of your health over its duration. So Evocation is this spell here. It's on a 4 minute cooldown. We gain 15% of our mana and 10% of our health instantly and another 45% of your total mana and 30% of your health over 5 seconds. Basically, this is a way of getting your mana back if you run out. But also, because of that Glyph, it can actually alleviate some of the healing you need from your healers and you can therefore technically use this as an added defensive spell to regain some health when needed. And lastly, we've got Glyph of Slowfall, where your Slowfall no longer re requires a reagent. This is, of course, fantastic and just a quality of life improvement. Same on the Glyph of Conjuring, reducing the mana cost of Conjuring spells. And also Glyph of Arcane Brilliance, reducing the mana cost of Arcane Brilliance by 50%. If you do happen to run out of mana, somebody's died in a fight and has been battle rezzed, etc. This could be useful. Apart from that, it's, it's just a bit of quality of life, really. So how are we going to use this in a rotation? We'll start off with single target. First priority is always going to be using our Pyroblast when it has a um, proc from Hot Streak. Remember, that's from our crits, and that is actually going to mean it's instant and costs no mana, as you can see here. Otherwise, as you can see, it's quite a long cast time. So we're only going to be using it as number one in the priority when it has got a Hot Streak and it's going to be instant and free. After that, we're going to be using Flame Orb on cooldown, and we're going to apply Living Bomb to our target. When it explodes, we will refresh it, and you want to make sure that you're not refreshing it before it explodes. We do want to let it explode, as you will see here. It's then exploded, and we now refresh it. We're going to apply and refresh our critical mass with Scorch. If you've forgotten what that is, that is this debuff here, 5% additional chance to be critically hit by spells. And that again is from this talent down here. Your Living Bomb and Flame Orb spells deal more damage, and your Pyroblast and Scorch have a 100% chance to cause your target to be vulnerable to spell damage. And we're going to make sure that we keep that debuff up on our enemy with our Scorch spell. As our filler spell, we're just going to be using our Fireball. For our main DPS cooldown, we have Combustion, combining your damaging periodic effects on the enemy target, but does not consume them instantly dealing X amount of fire damage and creating a new periodic effect that lasts 9 seconds and deals damage 
per time equal to the sum of the combined effects. Now, I know that may sound confusing, so let's talk through it. Let's remember that the Ignite talent means that our critical strikes from non-periodic fire damage, mainly in this instance we're talking about Pyroblast and Fireball, your critical strikes from non-periodic fire damage cause the target to burn for an additional 40% of the spell's damage. Therefore, when we crit with Pyroblast or Fireball, we are going to be putting an extra dot, Ignite, onto the target. We want to make sure that we're using Combustion when we've just landed a massive critical strike, ideally from Pyroblast, on the target. Because remember, Combustion is combining the dots on the target, and we want to be combining the biggest ones possible. We also want to make sure that Living Bomb is on our target, so that that can be affected into Combustion as well. So when we deal a large critical strike from Pyroblast or Fireball, and we have Living Bomb on the target, that's when we want to use our Combustion. Another cooldown we do have is our mirror image. It's a very small DPS increase, but it basically makes mirror images of you um, that will also do damage. You can use that just whenever you want, really, on cooldown. It's not as in-depth as your combustion. If you want to look at, then, the multi-target rotation, really, we're not going to be using these, and we can just use our Fire Blast. And that is in due to the impact talent. Gives your damaging spells a 10% chance to reset the cooldown on Fire Blast, and cause your next Fire Blast you cast to stun the target and spread any fire damage over time effects to nearby enemies within 12 yards. And you can see here, we have the impact buff at the top of the screen, um, where the next f fire blast is going to spread periodic fire effects. And we can use our fire blast when we get that to spread our fire effects from our main target to other nearby targets, and therefore doing AoE damage with just our core single target rotation. Going over the single target rotation again, just to make sure we know what we're doing. We're using Pyroblast whenever it procs and we have an instant and free one. We're using Flame Orb on cooldown. Living Bomb, we're keeping up on the target and letting it explode before we refresh it. We're putting critical mass onto the target with our Scorch. Don't forget you can use Scorch while moving. We're using Fireball as our kind of filler spell. And whenever we get a huge crit with Pyroblast or Fireball and have Living Bomb up on the target, that's when we want to use our Combustion. Whenever we get a proc from Fire Blast, we're going to use that to spread damage to other nearby targets in AoE. We've got a few other things here. Um, time Warp, this is your Bloodlust or Heroism, increasing the haste of you, you your party, and raid members by 30% for 40 seconds, of course. Arcane Brilliance, increasing the party and raid's intellect. Counter Spell is your Interrupt or Kick, interrupting your enemy spell casting. It's on 24 second cooldown, counters the enemy spell cast, etc. You can conjure a mana gem to get some mana back if you need. Molten Armor lasts for 30 minutes. You should keep this up at all times. Causes 244 fire damage when you are hit. Increases your spell crit by 5% and reduces the taunts you're going to be critically hit. Lastly, Blink is good at getting us out of any dodgy uh, situations. Basically blinking forward. For things like professions, enchants, gems. Firstly... Above my head here are two <laughs> enchants. These are actually going to be obtained via Guardians of Hyjal Reputation and also Ferrazane in Deepholm Reputation. There is a revered one for Ferrazane as well, not just Exalted. Obviously, Exalted is the better one. If you need a reputation guide, check the link in my description. I've done a video for that on how to get them and how to get them quickly. These add Intellect and Haste and Crit, and these are fantastic for a head and shoulder enchant. For the gems you're going to want, red gems is the Brilliant Inferno Ruby, yellow gems is the Reckless Ember Topaz, adding Intellect and Haste, and the Purified Demon's Eye is what I'd advise you put in your blue slot with 20 uh, Intellect and Spirit. Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond is going to be the meta gem you use, adding 54 Intellect and giving you a 3% increased crit chance. Regarding professions, I advise tailoring. One, because we wear cloth anyway, which is a great synergy with the profession for us as mages. And secondly, we can get a cloak enchant, giving you a chance to increase your spell power by 295 when casting a spell. The second profession I advise is enchanting. We can add enchants to both of our rings individually, adding 23 spell power on each one for a total of 46 spell power when taking both ring enchants into account. For your weapon enchant, I would go for Power Torrent. It has a chance to increase your intellect by 500 for 12 seconds. And for the rest of your enchants, it's just going to be the basic mighty stats and um, intellect, etc. that you're going to be putting on all your other slots. Nothing too exciting, really, with those. For consumables, Flask of the Draconic Mind adds 300 intellect for an hour. And your potion is going to be your volcanic potion, increasing intellect by 1200 for 25 seconds. If you've got a combustion window coming up, use it for this. 
One interesting thing is flame caps. These can be farmed in Outland with herbalism, and you use it, and it gives you the chance to strike a ranged or chance to strike a ranged or melee target for forty fire damage. Also increases fire spell power by eighty and lasts sixty seconds. This does not share a cooldown of your potion, your elixirs, your flasks, nothing. You can use this all on its own, unless Blizzard change it, which I don't think they will. It's a very unique item that us as Fire Mages and no other class that I'm aware of really has. Again, it can be farmed with Herbalism in Outland. Severed Sagefish Head, gaining 90 intellect and 90 stamina for an hour is the food you're going to go for, and Mythical Healing Potions in case you need them. And that's it, guys. That is how you're going to play Fire Mage in Cataclysm. Cataclysm? In Cataclysm Classic. If you have any further questions or queries about the spec or any other specs, please do consider joining my Discord, where we have a really friendly community happy to help with anything you may be stuck on. And if you would like to support the channel or you'd like to get LVI profiles, behind the scenes videos and spreadsheets, etc., and written guides on things like how to sim or log your character, do consider joining my Patreon. There's a link down below in the description for that. A lot of people are using ad blockers these days, and us creators don't really make much anymore, not that I ever did, um, as I'm quite small anyway, from YouTube. And Patreon is a really amazing way that you can support me and the channel, which helps get these videos out, if you would like. If you are looking for other guides, whether that is for mages or other classes, I've done every single spec for you, and they are all available in this playlist here. You can also check out my channel for dungeon guides, rep guides, tier lists, and things like that for Cataclysm as well. 